Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vectoring ponies in Illustrator. To begin with I'm going to help familiarize you with the GUI setup in Illustrator. Over here you have the layers panel. This is where you will organize everything that has to do with the vector. As you can see I have already this one layer with the image right here. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lock this layer that way I can't accidentally move it around. Then I'm going to create a new layer with this button. And then I'm going to create a sublayer. Sublayer is just a layer within a layer, and this button saves you the trouble of creating one and then having to drag it around the screen to put it into the layer that you want. Next above that is the swatches menu. Just like in Photoshop and Illustrator or Inkscape, it serves the exact same function. Right now I don't have any swatches at all, which is exactly what I want for the moment because I have all of them pre-prepared in this menu here. Now I'm going to open up Applejack and it's going to pop up this menu. By clicking this little folder right here it imports all of my swatches over into this menu so I can just close this. And I'm also going to open up the Twilights because her colors contrast very well against Applejack's and they'll be useful for demonstrations. Now then, and I might need some of the basic colors as well. You never know. Okay. And import and close. Now then, let's just jump right into it and I'll explain the tools as I go along. Uh, firstly, I always start with the farthest layer or the farthest object away from it. Now since I'm recording this on a laptop you're going to see me using shortcuts a lot rather than using the menu over here. Um, but The first tool we're going to use is the direct select tool. Because of the way that Illustrator works it saves some of the functions of the previous tool that you selected and the direct select tool is how you or one of the many ways you can actually manipulate the anchor points and handles on a stroke. So, uh, the other tool we're going to be using is the pen tool. Just like in Photoshop, it creates nodes on a pa um, on a pa uh, stroke. Okay, and I'm just going to click right here to get started. Now, currently, I don't have a stroke color, which is right here, but I do have a fill color. I don't like the fill color, so I'm just going to uh, turn that off. I'm going to switch over to the stroke color and I'm going to choose let's just go with one of Twilight's colors to keep a good contrast and make things very visible. Okay. Starting right here, I'm just going to get a very rough shape of the curve and I'll go back and fix all the errors later. Now as you can see it's a very thin line compared to what hers are. I can change that right over here in the stroke menu options. Now let's see, these look to be about maybe a 5, it's a little bit too thick, let's drop it down to a 4 instead. All right. And I'm going to continue on from there. Okay. Uh, let's adjust that so there's an actually a curve, make that a little bit longer. Okay. And for most of this, I'm holding down the command key, which, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, is the exact same thing as the control key. It serves the same function, so if you ever hear me say command, just replace that with control. Just going to do a very rough trace here. Now then, this is going to be tricky because I want to keep the curve here, but I need to get it right up here. So I'm going to create a midpoint. Midpoints are very useful for getting the right curve, such as this, put it into a, a stroke. Now, you may think uh, I could have saved my time by just putting the point there before I put it there, but that doesn't always work. In fact, it usually gives you flat spots in the stroke. Okay, and I got it very rough. I'm going to close the path off. Now, 
In Photoshop, it usually gives you, or it will always give you two handles on that last one, but not in Illustrator. I find that kind of annoying, but what can you do? So what you have to do is click and continue dragging, and you'll get the second handle. Now then, that is our first stroke. I'm going to just name this uh, tail stroke. Now I like to keep the fill and the stroke a little bit separate if at all possible. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to use a little thing called paste in place, which is shift control V. Now I have a second and it's in the exact same spot. If I had just done a paste like that, it would have moved because it's based on the center of the canvas in the Illustrator. I'm just gonna undo that. Now then Let's take the lower color, rename that tail fill, and then I'm going to turn off the stroke color, switch to the fill color, and let's give it twilight's fill color. Now, like I said, very rough. Right. However, this is going to prevent me from actually seeing anything, so I'm just going to turn that back off. Now, um, a quick note about the layers panel. When you see something highlighted in blue, that means that this is the one that you currently have selected. However, it does not mean you're editing that one. In order to edit one, you actually have to come over here to where this little dot is and click it. This brings up all the options of the current tool. Okay. So, um, and if you want to click off of that without switching tools, then all you have to do is hold down Control, Shift, and click A. And press the A button on your keyboard, and it deselects it. Now then, we still got to go and get these little details in her tail, so I'm just going to start here. And get about the midpoint of the curve. Now, this stroke is actually thinner than the outer stroke, so I'm just going to drop that down to about a 3. And not quite where I want. Okay, there's one, and then here's the next one. It's gonna be a little bit trickier. Let's start it here. Now, since I'm doing this on a laptop, this left menu is actually scrunched up a lot more than it normally would be. So your tools may not be in the exact same place, but I'll try to point them out as best I can over here while I'm using them. Okay, And that is the upper portion of her tail. Now, we still got the lower portion of it to go. So I'm just going to zoom in real quick. AJ's tail is a little bit weird because it has both curves and points in it. So you have to be very careful when vectoring it. Okay, and we just need to use this. Now, you just saw me break the point in half, or break the point from being smooth to a sharp point. And you can do this a couple of ways. One, you can come over here to the pen tool menu and click convert anchor point. You can hold down shift and hit C and that brings up the little carrot that uh, converts them as well. It's, um, if you just click on a point and drag it, it converts it back to smooth. But if you click on the handle and drag it around, that makes it a point again. Now if you don't want to do that, you can also come up here to the top, click, command click on the point, oh, uh, command, command clicking uh, with the carrot select the convert anchor point tool select actually switches it between them. But if you have the direct select tool, you can convert them via this right here. That changes it to a smooth. That changes it to a angle. And the same is true when you have the pen tool selected. Right now I need this to be a sharp point and right now it's just a regular anchor point. So with this little slash visible I can just click and drag and that brings up my anchor my handle for that again and I can drag it around. Now I'm going to command click so that I can uh, it looks like it got rid of both of my anchor points. Okay in that case I'm just going to delete this anchor point 
I switch over to the delete anchor point tool under the pen tool, which is right here, or I can press the minus key on my keyboard. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to switch back to the direct select tool so I don't have the delete anchor point tool selected still in memory. And then I'm just going to start back at this point here. Okay. I'm going to hold down the alt key just so I don't have to switch tools and that brings up the convert anchor point tool function. And these anchor points are a little bit too close to make the point happen as an, a regular stroke. So I have to play around with this a little bit until I get it to pop up. There we go. All right. Now I'm back down here. Convert this. And need to this up here a little bit. All right. And now I have the curve. And here is another pointed section. going to join the points right here. And as before, I'm going to drag it until I have both handles to play around with, not just one. Okay. Now then, same thing here. I'm just going to take and duplicate that. I'm going to make the lower one my fill color. And the turn off the stroke for it. And the other one is going to stay the same. Now because these are actually below the main tail up here, I'm going to click on this one, hold down the command key, and click on the next one, and just drag them both down to the bottom here. Now I'm going to turn off the fill once more. And since, I, and since I want to have roughly the same size, or same width stroke here, uh, down here as I do up here, I'm just going to click back on that path. That brings up the formatting, as you can see, for it. I'm going to deselect it, and it's still saved. And then I'm just going to trace it out, which this one might actually be a little bit smaller than the previous one. Oops. Clicked on the line there instead of the anchor or the handle. Let's drop this down to a 2. And then simple enough. Now I also got this little right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the color of the stroke by hitting my little slash key or you can come over here and click this and then I'm going to oops, um, let me switch these around what you can do by swapping the stroke and fill which changes uh, the stroke to be nothing and the fill to be the color I originally chose but misclicked on okay yeah, I'm just gonna make that a quick object Put this under that part, and there we go. Okay, and I'm going to drag this down below the tail fill. And if I turn this on and turn that on, and then take, oops, let's close that and bring this down here. It is a very, very rough form of that said this will not be perfect and it is just going to be a quick dirty demonstration of how all this works. Now I'm going to name my sublayer tail just so I keep it organized relatively. I'm going to create a new sublayer and I'm going to go for the next closest object which for me would be either the far legs or her hat. Let's go for the legs for now. And then, uh, just going to hide her tail for now because the colors are distracting. Now then, I'm going to choose this. It looks to be about... Let's go with five points for now. <coughs> and then uh, and turn off my fill color. Now there's a little bit more to the stroke menu if you ever have to worry about it. Uh, and you can, If you ever had to use the brushes or the profiles. And you can get to that just by clicking these little arrows right here until it pops up like that. I generally don't worry about it and just keep it at that point because this is all I really need. Oh, that's one thing. Always set your mire limit to 10 so that you can taper the strokes properly. Now then, back to the far legs. Let's start with her back hoof. 
just going to put a anchor point there, and then I'm going to put another one here. That way I hide it. Ooh, that's a little bit too large. So let's go. Let's go down to a three. That's about right. Sometimes you have to average out the extra pixels from the source image. Okay. Now the next one is going to be here. And there's a slight curve, so I'm just going to put the next anchor point here. Right okay. Since it's mostly hidden, I'm just going to bring it all the way around through this, and it'll be hidden by the upper layers later. Okay. Name that hind leg. Now I can just turn on the fill by. Uh, switching over to that, and here's your body shadow color, and there we go. One hoof done. Deselect that. Click back up here and turn the fill color off so we can see, and start on the front leg. Now then always try to keep your leading handle in the direction of the part that you need to trace. That way it stays in line with what you're trying to trace. Otherwise it's going to go off the rails and look very very odd. Okay, just connect it up. Turn my fill color back on which is saved here. And the shortcut key for that is the greater than sign. Okay, and then there's the front leg. Since these are all saved in a uh, single layer I can just name them whatever I want and uh, they'll be separate from all the other layers. Now I still had something left back here, which is her haunch. So I'm just going to turn on it. Oops. And this is why you use deselect so that you make sure you're not editing something you don't mean to. Okay, I'm going to turn that color off and I'm just going to make a quick stroke here, which I'll taper at a later point. Sure, curves. Oops. Nope, undo. Correctly. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and here we go. Now I'm just going to turn these off because I don't need to see them right now. Now, let's go to her hat. Create a new sub layer. Name that hat. Now then, let's go with her hat stroke. Oops. I've got these switched around, so shift C to switch the colors, and D slash bar to take, turn that one off. Okay, let's start with the far, this layer away. Okay, this is a little bit hard to see. Let's go with a slightly different color. I want a very light green. Oops wrong color, or wrong selection. There we go. Okay, as you can see, this handle is in line with the part that I'm trying to trace. Keeps it nice and even. I'm going to try this a little bit closer to the curve. Generally, you want your anchor points on either side of the curve, never on top of the curve, because then you'll have a flat spot where a curve should be. Let's try this a little bit farther behind the other stroke, and there we go. Just connect the two, and all you do is switch colors and add the fill color. Change that name of that, and there we go. I'm going to turn that off until I've entered the rest of this. Which, let's go back to this color for the stroke. fewer anchor points you make, the better it turns out. This one's going to be a little bit tricky due to the curve, so I'm going to just put one right here where it looks like it's partly flat already. Okay, another one right here.
and there's a slight curve in her hat right about here. Keeps her from looking too similar all the way around. Okay, and corner. and connect the two. Alright, now then, I want to change this to uh, my hat fill color, switch the other, and switch it to my hat stroke color, and then turn on the top. If we turn it. And now we have a relatively decent hat vector. Okay. Now then, let's see. Next close or in the next farthest away layer. Do you turn off the hat? Hmm. Well, that is more than likely going to be her flank and her body right here. So I'm just going to make a sublayer. I want to name that body. And let's go with another one Twilight's colors, just for contrast. And turn off her hat fill. Okay. Because of this, I need to put in a midpoint so I can keep the shape while making sure that I have a curve here. It's a little bit too sharp, and I wouldn't normally leave it like that for very long. But I'll smooth that. Oops. I'll smooth that out at a later time. Uh, for now, I'm going to teach you another tool, the width tool. Now, this is her flank. Now, the width tool is how we're going to taper this point uh, down to a single point rather than a flat end. Now, the way the width tool works is uh, you click on it, and now I can see my entire stroke. It tells me the point or uh, the width of the entire thing as well as how wide it is on either side. Now, if I just want to change the width and I double click and type something in and if I want to preview it then I just click in a different box here as you can see it shrunk the majority of it I don't and I don't want that so undo this time I'm going to hold down command before I uh, when I click on it then I'm going to double click and I'm going to change this to zero and then there we go it is now tapered, but it's not tapered properly because it thins out over too far of a distance. What I need it to do is thin just in this area. So once more, we're going to undo. I'm going to switch back to the pen tool, and I'm going to add in an extra anchor point right about here. Now, this just takes a lot of toying around with to figure out about where you want to put in that anchor point. I'm going to just see joining ones. I still haven't really figured out how that affects anything but experimentation. Okay. I'm going to turn that off so you can see. And then I'm going to switch tools so you can see exactly how it looks. Okay. Let's taper down to a zero point here, as you can see. And right here, it is my normal width of three. Now, the width tool has a bit of an annoying glitch. I'm not sure if if it's actually a glitch or not, but it changes the width of the rest of the line for reasons unfathomable by me. As you can see, this was originally 3, it's now 3.268. Well, I'm just going to change that back to 3. This one is still 3, and this one is still 3. If you put enough points on the line, it will roughly stay at 3. Regard Now that we got that tapered, let's switch back to the pen tool. Hmm. 
this should be the next. Uh, I have to layer this under that. I've made a boo-boo here. Oh well, I'll fix that in just a few minutes. Again, I'm going to stick with the colors I have for contrast, and I'm going to vector her neck and belly as one. Stroke is a little bit thin, so let's change that back to three. Have to be approximate here since her mane hides the rest of her neck. And that looks relatively decent. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to take the flank and put it outside of the this because the leg needs to actually go beneath this. So the next closest ones, which I'm going to change these colors over to the correct color now. By selecting both of these, now I can edit them at once. And as you can see. The correct colors are now in place. I'm just going to turn off this layer and the flank for now. <laughs> Let's see, the next farthest away layers would be the near legs and her head. We're going to go with the legs first. Then I'll work on the head because it's a little bit more complex. Switch to a contrasting color, and let's see. Again, you can see I have it roughly where, roughly pointed in the same direction. I'm going to be bringing the path, but it's not quite. It's going to cause a little bump in it. Just as a demonstration, you can see now I've got this odd lump in the line. It's because this handle is on the opposite side of the line of the stroke as this handle. So I need to fix that. Just need to bring it around. Similar to that. Let's turn the layer back on so I can see. And it looks much better now. Now this is the front leg. I'm going to go ahead and vector the back leg as well, and then I'll taper the points. Now, again, I'm running into the issue of the anchor or the handle not being on the same side as the previous one. And we're going to put an anchor point roughly here. Okay, and then we're up here to get the last bit of this curve. Yeah, this is causing another bump. So I need to That side, shorten the length of this. Okay, I just drag that a little bit closer. And let's turn off this layer and take a look. Okay, I've got a slight bump down here. Fix that by extending this slightly. Well, mostly fix it. <laughs> 
and that is just another glitch to work out later. Okay, now then, I need to the flank above this. Oop. Here we go. I need to put in an extra anchor point so that I stop the uh, tapering where I want it to. Again, this takes some practice to figure out where you want to put these and I still don't have it down to an exact science. So I screw it up just as easily as anyone can. Okay, we're gonna taper this one down to zero. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and taper this down to zero. I'm just gonna run this along the length of the path and you can see how it changes a decent amount. Okay, so. I'm going to take all my other anchor points I'm going to switch them back down to 3. Make sure that it's 3 here. Okay, good. Hmm. Even still, it doesn't completely fix everything. 3. Let's see. It is still not quite where I had it, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it will do. The more anchor points you have on this, the more easily you can change things. Okay, zero, enter. Okay, it's tapered, and this is three. This changed to something else. There we go. No, not zero, three. I'm certain there is a better way to do this, but I have yet to discover it or be taught it. So I do it the best that I can with what I know. I'm going to change the color to the correct stroke color. And there we go. Good enough for government work, in my opinion. Alright, uh, next up, I'm going to go to and switch to the head. Now, this one gets very messy very quickly, mostly because there's a lot of components to it, such as the eyes and the nostril, the mouth, all of that. So first off, we're going to start with her head. Some people do it differently, and you see it different ways in the show, but I try to keep this stroke over here the same width as her body strokes. I'm going to drag that a little bit farther down, so it's going to hide behind the muzzle once I'm done. Okay. Now, let's start here this. This one's kind of tough to get the angle right in this area here, but it's actually very important that you try to get it as close as possible. That way once you taper it, it looks very, very neat. Okay. Now then, I'm just going to add an extra anchor point here. And let's see, it's going to start to taper right about here, so I'm going to add one right right there. Uh, by the way, this little uh, box with the um, lines coming off the side from that's next to my pen tool, that is where you would connect two paths. Don't want to do that right now. We want them separate. Okay, rename this muzzle. And then I'm going to switch to my width tool. I'm just going to play around with this and we'll see if that doesn't help things just a little bit. Okay. It's not always going to fix everything. Is this still. Yes, that's still three points. This is 3.6. Why is my laptop making weird noises? 
Okay, this is 3.3 something. I'm going to change that. This is 3.2, and I still haven't tapered the other one, so I'm more than likely going to have to go back and readjust all of these. Okay, that's at 0, that's at 3. It changes a little bit in here, that's at 3. It changes, well, none here. Okay, this is at 3, and it changes somewhat in here. If I wanted to really mess with it, I could put another anchor point in right there and change the width on that and that would help out on some of it but I'm not too worried right now so the point is to show you where all the tools were, are and how they work now the next thing up is I'm going to switch over to the fill colors and I'm just going to do these the Photoshop method because I have much more control over them that way so rather than having a stroke I'm going to have a path So I'm going to do that. I have to drag and spin around a little bit because Illustrator is stupid with these things, in my opinion. Photoshop actually does it right and gives you both handles when you join the two ends of a path. Okay, there's her nostril. Let's start right here and factor her frown. AJ is much cuter with a smile on her face, in my opinion. Okay. And if you don't think ponies are cute, then why are you listening to this tutorial? Okay. And let's just turn off the layer, make sure that this all looks good. Hmm. This could be done a little bit better. It needs more of a curve to Okay, and I'm going to play with the anchor point just a little bit. It's still got a bit of a lump right there, but that can be fixed later. Okay, turn it on. Alright, now that all of that's done. Now that I'm going to create a sub layer, and I'm going to put it, let's see, down here on the bottom. This is going to be my eye sub layer. I know it's probably going to be very hard to tell, but I keep everything very well organized, and it's hard to read on a low-quality video. Okay, let's see. Would you turn stroke color off? And this is where all the basics come in handy. Um, what you need to do here is use the ellipse tool, which can be found right here. It's under the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool is the M shortcut key, and ellipse is the L. I use the all of the shortcut keys, so I sometimes forget to tell you guys about this. Okay, so I'm just going to get it to the approximate size. I'm going to switch to the right select tool and then I'm going to hold down the command key. This lets me play around with it like it's the free transform tool from Photoshop. I'm just going to drag over here. Okay, expand it in the corner. I just had to get it approximate because it's going to be masked so that nothing outside of this white goes around and I'm going to have the eyebrow covering this. Okay, okay that looks very good. Right, and this is going to be her. I try to name everything based on the perspectives of the pony, so that's going to be her left eye. Oops. Uh, before I do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make a copy of this. I just want that copy and paste in place and it's not going to do it so I'm just going to paste them in one and I'm going to get rid of the extra layer. Now this one is going to be my mask and I can create a mask by going up to object, clipping mask, while I have one of these selected and click make. And that's a glitch I keep running into. It requires me to have both of them selected for whatever reason. But anyway, clipping mask, make, and now I have a clipping group right here. This is the original, which I'm just going to name uh, eye white, and this is the actual mask here. Now this, I'm going to actually turn a fill onto. I've got this switched around. Okay, so I need to just switch these. 
place. Alright, so now you can see that. And now I can show you how a clipping mask works. That is the size of the color or the layer with the fill, the object with fill in it. And this is the mask. As you can tell, it doesn't matter how big I make the fill object, the mask keeps it at the size that I want in the shape that I want. Now then, uh, oops. I'm just going to turn this off so I can see the other colors, or if I wanted to keep that on, and I can just click up here, uh, click on this little button, and the opacity is up here in the top, and turn that down to 10%, deselect, switch back to my ellipse tool, which again is over here. Now then, I need to do her iris, which is the color with the gradient, or the part with the gradient in it. I'm going to lock these two in place so I don't mess them up, and I'm going to keep them in this. I'm just going to name this clipping group the left eye, because everything I make is going to go in here, so it is clipped into that first mask I made. I'm just going to get a very rough size of it. Switch back to this, and turn down the opacity to 10% so I can see. Okay, it needs, a little, needs to be brought out a little bit farther and a little upward. Okay, and there we go. Now if I take this and put it into the left eye where the clipping group is, then I change the color. Let's pump this back up to 100%. Okay, I've got these backwards switch. Oops. I do. Select, then switch and then turn that off. As you can see, it doesn't go outside the, the eye white that I set up earlier. Which, let's turn this back up to 100%, and there you go. Easy as pie. I'm just gonna turn that back off so I can see. Now then, uh, I'm gonna turn, actually, let's go ahead and create the clipping mask for this. So I duplicate it. It's in the exact same place, and then I select both of them, and I'm going to use the shortcut this time, which is Control or Command 7. This creates a new clipping group within a clipping group, so that once I go to do her eye accents right here, they won't go past this. So, let's back to this. Now then, most ponies have a gradient in their eyes, and AJ's I'm going to show you how to do right now. Now firstly, um, I have the gradient um, option menu open right here. Um, you can turn on the gradients over here and with the greater than symbol key on your keyboard or you can click it over here. Mostly I prefer to just use the gradient tool which you'll find right here or you can click G. Now then, let's see. Oops. It is in a lot of clipping groups. So. Okay, let's unselect, deselect because sometimes things get caught. And oops, I got them flipped around. There we go. I had the stroke selected. Okay, so I'm just going to turn on the gradient. Now then, this gradient tool is always locked to the center, so you can move it around a lot, but dropping it down just resets it back to the center of the ellipse. So what I need to do is I'm going to rotate it. Okay, you rotate it by going up to the top and finding that little round arrow. I'm going to click on this. This is how you actually move it by clicking on that little round circle on the bottom. So I'm going to just drag it down here. Then I'm going to click on this, and when I get that little uh, dotted line box, I can drag this up and lengthen the gradient. Now then, over here is where you'll select the colors, and I'm just going to double click on the gradient slider, and this opens up my swatches menu. If you click on this, you can pick your own colors by switching between grayscale, uh, red, green, blue, hue, saturation, and black, CMYK, and the website for our GB selections. But for now, I have all the swatches selected, so I need the light gradient for this end. Double click here, the dark gradient for that end. And then I can either play around with where I want it to start transitioning here or 
over here. And I want it, the darker portion to usually stay along the top of the eye. Sometimes they're a little bit lower. You have to use your best guess or a higher resolution screenshot than I have. Which according to this one is very high up there. Let's rotate it a little bit more. There we go. Now then, this is the iris layer. Deselect, and I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, hmm. Let's go with the eye accents now. The eye accents are, let's see. I always do the light one first because I always put it beneath that one, uh, beneath the dark color. We're going to put it in the clipping group for the iris. And they always start here and they're triangular. So you start at this point, drag it out past that, and you can afford a little bit of leeway here because the darker color is going to be put over that. So I'm just going to do this. There's the handle, which is a little bit hard to see. If you have a problem seeing things, all you have to do is come over here and click on this, and you can change the color of the path, of the um, little path color right there. Now then, deselect, and I'm going to, let's see, the accent actually popped up right here. I want it down here. As you can see, the clipping mask is already functioning and cutting it off at the end of the, that. Now let's turn that off so I can see the darker highlight, which is right here. Okay, again, you start in the center. Drag it along that. This one you have to be careful with since you have to be precise on this end. You don't have something to overlap it. Okay. And if I want to check it against it, all I have to do is turn off the fill, and I can still see the path. Okay, and it's a little bit tall, so bring it down a little bit. Adjust the handles and turn the fill back on. I'll drag it down here into the clipping mask along with that one and turn this one back on. And as you can see, there we go. Almost right. Just switch to this and there we go. That doesn't make too much of a difference in the end, but I'm picky. Okay. I'm going to turn those off and I'm going to uh, do the eye uh, reflections and the pupil next. So switch over to the appropriate color and we're back with the ellipse tool now for this. Okay, and this is again going into the left eye. We're going to put it above the iris clipping group and then turn it off just so that we can see these two. All right, I prefer to do the large one first. I have no idea why, just the way I work. Again, I switch to the right select tool so that I can play around with this as much as I need to, holding down the command key so it works like the free transform tool from Photoshop. Illustrator has its own transform tool, which if I'm not mistaken is, yes, this right here. But it's an unfamiliar key for me, mostly because it's out of the, it's just not what I'm used to. So I stick to the direct select tool. Let's turn off the fill so we can see the line over what I'm tracing. Okay. And it just keeps getting worse. We'll call this one close enough. Turn that back on, drop it into the clipping group, and do the next one. Again, turn that off so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, looks good. Turn it on, and there we go. Drop this in here, and I'm going to name them really quickly. Large reflection and small reflection. Okay, and that is her left eye. Let's turn it on and let's turn on everything and show you exactly how it looks. Okay. There. We go. There. Perfect.
perfect pony eye. Close that off. Now, we got to do this side as well. It's mostly hidden by her mane, so it's very convenient for what I'm doing. First, let's do a very quick ellipse. Turn off the fills so I can see. As you can see, it's going to stick out behind the head stroke some. That's fine because we can change that. Okay, rotate this slightly. And there we go, good enough. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to extend it upwards slightly so it covers a bit more of the actual. Oh, curse is net. Ah, here we go. Here's my path. There we go. Now, I'm going to turn this back the color back on. I'm going to change the opacity down to 20% so I can still see it. And now, because this needs to be my clipping mask, I'm going to edit the path. I'm going to add an extra point right here and one way down here. So let me bring this down just slightly so it's beneath that. Okay, now, add an extra point here. I'm going to take this anchor point, I'm going to move it in here, and I'm going to convert this to a sharp one so it falls along behind her head stroke. Same thing's here, just going to take and move it up. This way it's all hidden behind that. Now I only see this part right here which is exactly what I want. I'm going to take and copy and then I'm going to shift control or paste it in place. Now then I'm going to make another mask. This is going to be the right eye by her perspective. This is going to be the eye white. And I'm going to bump that up to 100% opacity. It's not changing color. I'm not sure why. Hmm. Uh, that would be why. Because my cliffy mask has been broken. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that because it didn't copy correctly. And undo all the way back to this. Now, as you can see, the clipping mask is actually broken. It didn't copy correctly, so I'm just going to recopy that. It only got a portion of it, and now I can see my eye white. I'm going to select both and create my clipping group. Set the color there. And then I'm actually going to take this, and just in case I had to play around with the mask some, I'm going to expand this beyond the normal size. Clipping mask keeps it all in place, and I don't have to worry about um, moving anything. And I don't have to edit this to keep it in line with the clipping mask later, so that it'll, uh, I still have everything visible. Uh, now I'm just going to turn that off and lock it so I don't uh, mess around with it by mistake. Which I have another handy tool I'll show you in a little bit called the isolation mode tool. Okay, I'm just going to vector the iris. Up. Let's turn off the fill so I can see. Or it's a little bit too thick. Okay, and there we go. Let's turn the fill color back on. And in fact, we're going to turn on the gradient, which is right here. And you can see the gradient for this is exactly the same as I had for the iris over here. So handy little thing that Photoshop is, or Illustrator is doing for me. I drag it in the clipping mask and now I only see what I want to see. Make a copy of it, copy and paste it in place, 
create a clipping mask, and now I have the iris clipping group as well. I'm just going to turn this off so I can see her eye highlights, which let's back out. Hmm, they're almost invisible. They're almost pretty much hidden by her eyelid and muzzle here. But that's no reason to leave them out. And I'll leave out the lower one because it's just too too well hidden, to be honest. Okay. And bring that down. Okay, sometimes the illustrator plays tricks with you and plays around with the handle that it shouldn't be for whatever reason. Drag this into here. And there we go. Get that straight. That is going to be visible, so I'm going to go ahead and add in the other highlight as well. And this is the darker accent. So now I need to do the light accent. So uh, I'm going to lock this. Drag that below the dark accent. And because of the eye brow right here is going to be hidden for the most part, so all those jagged edges are going to go away. Alright, the next thing is going to be the iris, or the pupil rather. So let's switch the gray, uh, the ellipse tool again, change it to a black fill, and. Huh, that worked out well. Drag it about the iris clipping group. Set it to invisible so I can see where I'm going to put my eye reflections. Okay. Drag that right there. Not sure why they're straight up and down in this case. They usually aren't. Okay. Put both of these in here. A point of reference, even if you have this clicked and this clicked, you won't move, or you won't always be affecting, um, or you won't be able to move both of these around between layers. You're only going to be moving the one. If you want to move both, you have to have both of them selected in blue highlight. Okay. Now, let's see, which one was this? The uh, large reflection. Now then, I have both eyes finished. Don't believe Applejack has more than one right eye. So I'm going to turn on everything. The eyewider sclera. Okay, and now I have the left eye and the right eye finished. Was quite odd over here. Hmm. Oh, and that's why we edit things. Okay, now the next step is going to be the eyebrow or eyelid and the eyelashes. So I'm going to create a new sub layer. I'm going to put that just above the eyes. I'm just going to name this uh, brows slash lashes. Okay, I'm going to turn off the eyes so I can see, and then I'm going to switch back to my pen tool. Now then, in this case, I'm going to be using, I believe I'll use the actual method for Illustrator rather than my preferred method. Okay. Let's see, it should start about right here, so I'm going to put two endpoints. Currently, it's set to a different width than I would normally like. Okay, this is going to get annoying to see. So I'm going to change it to a different color. Okay, now let's go back to the stroke. And it's been put right here. Okay, so this is her left 
brow. I'm not quite done with this. Uh, now then, this is an important lesson because I did not figure this out for a little while. Uh, let's change this to 2 and click on this and that changes this up here. Here is the width profile that we want. We will in a minute anyway. If you want to continue a stroke that you were working on earlier, you can't just do this because it makes an entirely new uh, anchor point on a different path. Um, and that is what that little asterisk next to the pen tool means. So if you want to continue on a path that you have um, previously left off on, what you have to do is go to the last anchor, uh, the anchor point you want to continue from, like either this one or this one, and in this case, this one here, and look for the little slash, then click and drag. It's going to make a smooth handle and get you the other handle there. Now in this case, I need it to turn hard to this. As you can see, I continue the path and made it just where I want it to. Now then, let's go back to the width profiles. So I have to click back down here to change my upper bar. Mm, excuse me. And then that doesn't work very well for what I'm doing. Hmm. So let's bump this up to three, and that's still not going to be enough. So I don't like this, so I'm just going to change this to a three. And this is going to stay at zero. Hmm. I don't like that very much. Using the Photoshop method is just going to uh, yield weird, weird results, and I don't want that tonight. So for now, that will work. Um, what I do need to do though is I need to change this to a black. Here we go. For these other two, though, I am going to use the Photoshop method because it just yields slightly better results. Let's turn off the fill so I can Let's turn off the fill color so I can see. Convert and then bring this down here. Oops. And I dragged on that rather than having the handle, which is often a problem with me. Okay. Oops. Come on. Okay, connect. And there we go. Now I'm just going to fill this back with color. Okay. And then once more. Close enough, and I'm just going to have these have these connect. All right, and that is her left eyebrow and lashes. Now to do this one, for it, I'm just going to start right here. I'm just going to bring this up, and I'm going to switch to this. Now let's go back to the stroke. I want this at, let's say, a three because of the width profile. More than likely, it's going to change it how I, in ways I don't expect. Yeah. Let's see, wasn't there? Nope. There is not one that just tapers on one end, precisely the way I want it to. So let's drop this back down to a two, and switch to the width tool. And there we go. I'm just going to put these together because that is generally how they work. That may have tapered a little bit too quickly, but we can check it. Yeah, that tapered too quickly. So what I need to do, hmm. 
more than likely just pull the eye to the farther to the left. But again, I'll fix that later. For now, those look relatively alright. Okay, so the last three things that we have to deal with besides the kitty mark are the lower mane, the upper mane, and her ear. Okay. I've also got to add fills to everything, except for her four legs. So let's go with her mane in general. Right. Again, just going to use Twilight's colors for contrast. And we're going to do this in three parts. I'm going to start farthest away. Let's turn off all of her head strokes. And turn, turn these around. Okay. Let's start here. Okay. Bump it up to three because this has a slightly different size in her tail stroke. Okay. Like I said, AJ has weird mane and tail. Because that kind of moves farther up in here, we're going to vector this part in two pieces. This tapers right here and it's going to look kind of we're trying to connect all of that and it's just going to be messy so it's best to sometimes break up stuff into multiple pieces in fact it's your best bet if you want things coming out looking consistent and not messy at all Oops. I've clicked off this so I just need to restart the path there and that's where I want my anchor point a lot of this is trial and error and just playing around with it until you figure out how Illustrator likes to pl uh, play and what its particular rules are. Same with Inkscape, same with Photoshop. Get a better picture. Okay, it curves to the front rather than the back like the others. Okay, so. That did not work the way I wanted. So, bring this down. And I'm just going to convert it. And then that goes in behind the ear. Give it a little bit more curve there. And then connect the ends of the paths. Right, and I'm just going to change her color to the main stroke color. I'm going to switch down to a 2. Let's make sure I got this in the right layer. Okay, good, it's in the main. Okay, and then I want to vector these. Okay, this is still a 3. I don't want that. Take me to 2. Okay, and right, and then here we go. This is going to have to be here. Sometimes you do have to have the handles on a different sides of the line just to make the curve look right. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You just have to watch for the bumps in the line. Okay. And let's see, this is going to be her. I always call these her bangs. I try to group them together to make it easy on myself. So, try these up here. Right, and this should be the lower one. So what I want to do is I'm going to add in her main fill color because I got it set up like that. Hmm. Uh, I just want this one. Well, how did that work? Okay, 
that's there, that's there, and somehow that's, never mind, I know how I did it, I, I joined the paths, silly, there's just not joined on both ends. Now I would need to taper that, but you already know how the taper work, or the uh, width tool works, so I'm going to worry about that later. Let's run off the bang so I can see, and then we're going to go down here. Turn that off, and then this is going to be her, let's see, I call it the lower main. something like this you want to play around with the upper handle because this is a short curve and it curves back the other way in a very small amount of space. Uh, sometimes if you can't get enough fine control out of a anchor point moving it side to side what you have to do is zoom in. Adobe programs only allow you so much play at zoom levels. So you can't do fine work when you're zoomed out at uh, this. Only very, very heavy-handed work. I could try to line this up, and I probably could after a lot of playing around, but that requires the program to let you uh, play around with it that much. Okay, and then there we go. I'm going to switch to this color, then the fill, and I'm going to turn it off long enough to vector. Oh, let's turn it off. Oops. Turn it off. Okay. Come in here and put this down to two point for now. Again, try and get it on either side of the curve. And there you go. Now if we turn this back on, and this isn't completely hidden either. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to, let's see, create one more sub-layer. This is going to be for this. This is just going to be her ponytail. Wrong shortcut. Okay. Let's go with this fill and turn this off and let's get her little band. Doesn't matter too much about the other side because it's all going to be hidden behind the little end of her tail here, end of her ponytail. Turn that off so I can see, and let's start on a corner. Switch back to one point as a default. Let's turn it back to three. And that is a side effect of vectoring in Illustrator with Path, with the Stroke tool. It likes to create really, really weird points on the ends. The only way to fix that is to either keep playing with your anchor points until it's fixed, or at least satisfactory enough, 
or to do stroked path, which in Illustrator's case is called expand appearance or just expand. I'm not really sure what the actual difference is, but they pop up at different times and do, for me, the exact same thing. I'm certain there's a difference, otherwise they wouldn't have two tools that do the same thing, at least I would hope not. Oops. Start back here, and they're too close to have, oh, there we go, and the last point here. Um, try that here and then convert. Not going to have the curve I want, so I have to play around with this one. Okay, switch it back to two point and here we go. The reason I'm playing with both handles is because if you have a handle too long, you wind up with flat spots and what are mostly supposed to be curves. And you don't want that. It looks really, really w out of place. Okay, so now I've got these. Change both the, these to that. Um, I only need this one. Switch it over to that, and now we have the fill color. And there we go. And then the lower main. And as you can see, it looks similar to what I had, uh, what was on there. If we bump this up to four, it looks a little bit closer. Oh, well, those are the kind of errors that you work out once you're done. Remains finished. I'm going to do her ear next. Okay, let's go with Twilight's body stroke color. Hmm. I generally try to keep four points at most for the majority of the ear until I get to taper it. It's not always easy, and you have to be very careful with these handles because ears are tricky. Okay. Okay. Right. As you can see, I have something of a flat spot here, and I don't like that. So what I have to do is a little bit, and that gets rid of most of it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and taper this. So it wants to taper about here. So I'm gonna add a point there, and I'm gonna add a point here. Okay, and change. I want that back to four. And yes, I want to adjust. Wow. I did not need you at that. Five seems to be a better fitting width than four is, but this is just the purpose of the demonstration to show you how the tools work. Okay. Now currently this looks alright, so I'm going to but it's not on the curve anymore, so I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. I want to angle it slightly. Let's turn off the reference layer. Make sure I don't have any bumps in it. And there you go. 
roughly decent pony ear. Okay. Now I again am going to switch to the Photoshop method of doing things uh, for the inner stroke because it just works better for me. If you want to try it the Illustrator way, then what you need to do is just trace it out. Let's get it to say four again, and then either up here in this or down here at the bottom of this, change the profile. Okay, and there you go. Okay. Sorry, my headphones are bothering me. Right. This works very well for the inner ear stroke, which is that, uh, versus this. Uh, this you need a little bit more control over, in my opinion, and experience. I have the ear completely done. So let's turn everything back on to see what we got. Okay, tail I still need to change the colors on and do a little bit of work. Okay. Now then, have all the mains turned off. And I don't have the fills on for much of anything. <laughs> Alright, let's start here at the tail. I'm just going to change the colors of this very quickly. Select all of those and then change it to the tail stroke color. Okay, hey, there we go. Let's make sure everything's hidden properly. I probably got these stroke widths a little bit off on this, but that's alright because that's what editing or corrections are for later on. Okay, all the colors are right. I need to taper the haunch stroke here. So, select with tool and let's drop this down to zero. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell with the body stroke on, but there you go. Tapered. Okay, let's turn this back on. This does not need to be tapered. It will in fact be filled soon. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my far legs so that I can keep track of what I'm doing here. Uh, this is not as high up as it should be, so I'm going to just drag that point up a little bit and keep the curve, keep the curve in the leg. There. Now I'm going to switch over and I'm going to turn on her fill. Okay. okay. There we go. Okay. And for her hind leg going to do the same thing. You see it only does so much of it. So what I have to do is I have to go in and fill in all of this as well as for her head. I do that generally separately from the strokes because it just looks a little bit better to me and I have a little bit more control over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an extra layer down here. I'm going to add in a fills there. Alright, and then I'm going to turn off the stroke color for now. In fact, let me turn off this. Now, I'm going to go in and just put in a quick little stroke right here for now. Now, this is isol. Now, what I wanted to show you earlier is called isolation mode. So I'm going to click, so I'm highlighting the path here. I'm going to click on this menu and I'm going to go to this. Now, isolation mode makes it so that I cannot fool around with anything else on HA whatsoever, on any of the layers. I can only work with this path. It's very cool because then I don't have to go in and lock and then unlock everything. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a pain in the butt. Okay, so there we go. Since all this works below the main, I'll get it. 
if you accidentally click off on it, just click back to your layers menu and go from there. Since all this is below the same part, I can just put all of it in the same layer and not have too much trouble. I'm going to shorten this right here. I'm just going to put an extra anchor point right there, and then there we go. I'm going to turn on the fill color, and hit the escape key to exit isolation mode, or just come here and click exit. And now, I'm sure that is, okay, I've got a small fill error right here, so click back up here, and... Let's take this anchor point. Oops. Double click on the anchor point so that I'm selecting only it and drag it up here. Okay, that causes a little bit of a fill error there. Which I can fix that just by playing around with the anchor point. Hmm. And I have another fill error right here. Oops. Click there and drag. Let's just oops. let's just turn that. Well, if I could ever get a hold of the handle, I might get edited. edit it. There we go. Okay. And there is an issue here. So I'm just going to take and turn. And I did not hide the end of this very well. So I'll do that now. Okay, fills go in here. Okay, body fill. Okay, okay belly. Okay, there we go. I've actually created a couple unnecessary layers here, but you know, I'm doing this rather in a hurry and not taking much time to think very hard about what I'm doing. Okay, now I just need to do the head fill, which I'm going to do separately, just because it makes it a little bit easier for me. And, oops, uh, let's turn on the body fill, turn off the stroke color. And, actually, let me bring this down here. It's on the same layer as the body stroke, so it won't interfere with anything else. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it up through the eye. All the way back to where I started from. Okay. Now then this is the head feel. And I'm going to have a layering issue right here. So I'm just going to take this and bring it back in here. Bring that in a bit. Alright, and now the last fill I need to worry about is this one. The fill for the ear. Over, change that. And for the most part that works, but it's not supposed to cut off the main stroke. So, take that I'm going to bring it up here. As you can see, it fits in right behind the ear, how as it should. Now that I'm just missing her cutie mark, which I don't have one downloaded, and I still have her far legs turned off. Okay. Just play around with that until it looks about right. And that in general, is how you vector a pony. For the moment, um, the cutie mark is really just a copy and paste, and I may do a tutorial at a later point on how to use the uh, envelope distort tools. There are three or four variations on that, and they're pretty uh, they're pretty helpful. Um, 
I will also perhaps do a quick mesh tool tutorial in the future uh, just as a primer for uh, some of the other tutorials that are out there on the uh, internet. Okay, And these are just a little bit off and I'm going to adjust the with the strokes because they just look far too narrow for my taste. Probably a f yes, a five, maybe hmm, four looks much better. Okay, and thank you for listening. I hope you learned a little bit about vectoring in Illustrator. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. However, you can. Thank you and. Good night.